This is the painting by Johannes Vermeer, Woman Holding a Balance. Uh, Vermeer is my favorite painter. And Woman Holding a Balance is, is made in 1664, around that time. And yeah, you see here, not the beginning, Vermeer, not the young painter Vermeer. Well, he was young anyway, because he passed away at age 43, so... Uh, he was in his early 30s when he made this. Along the way, you see Vermeer transitioning from a more painterly approach, I would almost say, in which the paint is um, added. How can I say that? He, When you look at the milkmaid, for example, the paint has been applied with a certain coarseness sometimes. Um, there's a certain structure in the paint itself, and not that his later, his later works do not have that kind of structures, but it is a, a bit smoother than his earlier works, but it is not as stylized as, let's say, you know, the lady at the Virginal standing um, in the London National Gallery. So you have the milkmaid, for example, which is... Uh, you know, painted with a at certain spots a quite coarse uh, surface. Um, this is a more, a little more smoother. And later in life, he he uh, makes them more um, more smooth. And. Uh, I must say that um, his latest face in his painting is not as popular as his earlier face or, or his earlier faces, so to speak. And this is a bit in the middle of that transition. Um, it seems that a lot, as he got older he was getting more stylized in his designs, in his paintings. And we see a woman holding a balance. Um, I think in earlier times it was believed that she was weighing pearls or something, but there's actually nothing in that balance. When we look here, we see here the highlights or the catch lights. You know, you see the lights of of, yeah, of, of the metal of which this balance is made, but there's nothing in in here. It's just, she, she's just holding it. She appears to be pregnant. And here we have a painting in the background of a last judgment. So, last judgment, pregnancy, new life, balance. Um, it's easy to make some sort of connection. Um, you know, you, in the last judgment you have people going to hell, going to heaven or paradise. Uh, so you get this analogy between the judgment that Christ makes of people and you don't know what to expect of a new life. So I think that the meaning of this painting or how this painting works for many people who watches this painting um, that the meaning uh, is, is along those lights, the perceived meaning. Um, I find it always interesting to see how Vermeer treats lighting. And in this case, <clears throat> we see the light coming from a window here, but we do not see the actual window. There is a curtain. We see some reflected light on the wall. And we see here that she is lit from this this window um, and he does something quite smart because uh, the light from outside is so much stronger than what's inside that if he would have shown the light outside suppose he would have given us a view of what you can see through that window then the the, the difference between the strength of light of this and this would have been of such a nature that 
to to show that convincingly he would have made this he would have to make this very dark to get this uh, by comparison um you know the to the gift is the right tonal value so that's why he covers the actual light source with a curtain in this case you only see a reflection here so that's that that's the reason why you oftentimes see um, you know that the window is covered in some way and you see um, the, you know the main motif in in the highest light because most light is on uh, you know the light clothing that she's wearing also on her face but the face is not as light as the clothing he is very careful in grouping together light and darks uh, Vermeer uses in other paintings for example yellow jackets instead of this more blackish jacket is it black or very dark blue uh, I don't know but <clears throat> I've seen the painting once or twice in real life in exhibitions in the Netherlands but I guess it's more of a black jacket this but suppose he would have made this yellow then the area that is that would have been lit would have been much greater so now the uh, attention of the viewer is mostly directed at her face but if this was you know of a lighter color then we would have been distracted more so by giving this jacket this dark color and they were very aware of that in the 17th century um, he knows how to direct the attention to her face uh, they developed the idea that you can use, um, for example, um, the lit side of a dark object next to the shadow side of, for example, a light object. So uh, you get overall a dark area. So if you want to build up carefully uh, um, a composition with dark areas, you know you will you want you want to have a careful build up of from dark to light you put uh, dark clothing for example uh, in a certain area so while this is being lit her jacket is being lit because when you look at this white you know these white pieces of, of her jacket th those are quite light so while her jacket is being lit it is dark it functions as a dark area um, and it's it's very important to to get a sense of this because they did that a lot in the 17th century carefully choosing uh, the colors of clothing to have a careful build up from dark to light to group together uh, darks and to have a careful grouping of uh, light areas and dark areas um, I believe that it was at a relatively recent restoration, a cleanup, that these uh, lines in the frame of this painting uh, became visible again. And you have this rhythm of orange accentuations or orange or warm brown, light brown accentuations. Here you have this, here you have this gold. You have this subtle indication of her pregnancy here and you have this here so when you look at the painting your eye gets di directed by these and in a subtle way your eyes get directed through the whole painting when i'm looking at this and this is an issue that i have with more vermeers um, especially the music lesson in london and when you look at this it it should be rotated one degree or a part of of a degree because it's not totally straight you see that this is just a little bit rotated this way too much so the f and the music lesson in london uh, also is is not 
totally correct in its frame when you look at rotation uh, when, when you look at certain lines so I don't think you should mess with Vermeer's work um, but I think that along the way along that you know those paintings are 300 years old or something like that they got a bit rotated perhaps at some point so that's something uh, which distracts a little bit of the of the impression uh, this has on me I like what he does does here you have this quite dark area and here is either a mirror or a painting a painting has a shiny surface as well when it's varnished and it catches some light so there is this subtle breaking of this dark area there's a subtle mid-tone light which you see here if he was a little bit to the left of this viewpoint then this part of the frame would have covered this so then you wouldn't have seen this so um, I like the way he subtly knows how to break this dark area with this what you see here is a piece of cloth and he does this more often and uh, this could be anything maybe a jacket or just what it is a piece of cloth I mean if you if you have a room and you put a chair here then you have a logical explanation of why there is a chair in the room and there's a quite a logical explanation for these objects you know a, a box with jewelry but this always seems to me like a certain a bit of an artificial trick to 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 to, to get his compositions harmonic um, to, to to get his lights and darks um, clearly divided and to fill up this space without having to paint all kinds of details of the floor or something but why there is a cloth lying here I wouldn't know it's just um, it's a neat trick and I, I don't see other painters do that really just a piece of cloth something to put there in the composition to get a dark area let's look at her face um, there's something unnatural about this I mean it's like this is not totally correct because her forehead seems to turn here and then I think well what what what's this all about and she seems bald or something but I think that here we see uh, where Vermeer's way of styling of you know of styling a face um, is a bit at odds with a sense of reality so to speak um, but you, you can see it she doesn't seem to have eyebrows either I think that in the way he tried to uh, create this beautiful face which is idealized or you would have very you know a model with very regular features and I think that if he would have painted these eyebrows then it would have distorted this sort of purity that you see in this face and the same is here with the, the lack of hairs if would, he would have painted here something of hair then it would have distorted this overall impression that her face gives with this there's something I mean, I, he doesn't really refer to the Virgin Mary or something, but there, there's something quite re religious of about her face. It's it's, it's almost a, a, some sort of divine expression or something. And if he he had a, if he had a sense of detail in this, you know, the kind of details that f other painters would would uh, show, then it would have distorted the very angelic or very 
divine expression of her face. I really like the way she's holding her hand. There is a painting by Piero della Francesca and he shows the same kind of gesture with someone's hand. I'm not saying that Vermeer um, was inspired by that. It's totally possible that he invented this on his own, but I really like the rhythm of these fingers and the way she holds her little finger here. One thing I want to show is how he suggests pearls. He just adds a few dots of paint. Uh, he doesn't need much to suggest that there are pearls lying on the table. He doesn't paint everything in detail. He just puts a few dots there. And it's very suggestive. Woman holding a balance, National Gallery of Art in Washington.